All right, I'm starting off this video by saying that I purchased this iPad out of pocket and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and compare it against my M4 iPad Pro against the all new M5 iPad Pro. Now this happens to be the 11 inch model entry level, which means this is the base storage option, which still is a plenty of storage in my opinion, 256 gigabytes. And the grand total with taxes and everything, consumer price is listed right there. That's how much I paid, a little over a thousand dollars. But get this, while Best Buy is offering me like $180 for my old iPad, Apple is actually offering me $600 for my old iPad Pro M4. Now the benefits and the reason why I like doing these out of pocket purchases is because I can freely review the product as it is and give you my real honest opinion if it's worth buying or skipping. That's typically what generally happens when a content creator receives like a device in advance, like a day early or two days early, is they need to submit a video to the brand and they need to review it and accept it or decline it or ask for like some edits to remove certain things you might have said and they didn't like, nor do they want others to also realize this. So this is why I prefer doing it this way. I have the freedom to just upload and review the product as it is. It's kind of shady. So that's why I always like just purchasing out of pocket and making a video like this. So again, 256 gigabytes, 11 inch M5, which means this is the base non-nano texture because the texture display is only available on the iPad Pro 11 inch. That's a two terabyte storage option only. And at that point it gets really expensive. In my opinion, I think you're better off buying a laptop. But here's the unboxing experience. I am gonna go ahead and compare it against the M4 iPad in terms of thermo and processing speed and Wi-Fi speed and all that stuff. So I'll be sure to have timestamps in the description down below so you guys could skip through that if you don't want to see the unboxing process. But out of box, I can already tell. The only main difference really is just the no text in the backside. And I kind of do prefer that. But everything else, all the ports, camera cutouts, it's literally identical. And this is the space gray on both two bodies. and thickness, thinness, it's really hard to tell the two apart other than the text size underneath. Sorry if my M4 is kind of dirty. They really had time to clean it, but let's power these two devices up and let's take a look at everything else that's included in the box. So we do have a USB-C to USB-C and they still provide a 30 watt power adapter. It looks like, let me verify real quick. This is, I'm sorry, a 20 watt power adapter. And that's literally everything else on the box. No Apple stickers, unfortunately. Not even a valid instruction guide, just simple paper. So let me go ahead and go through the setup procedure and I'll get back to you guys once I'm done with all that. So here we are, I have both iPads successfully backed up and restored. Here's the M5 and here's the M4. First thing I like to do is let's go ahead and run a performance internet sp uh, speed test because the Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth has been improved. Now here's the previous score and they are connected to the same Wi-Fi network which is actually using the Wi-Fi 6E. Both are running at the same time, side by side. And here's our results. It's pretty close, not really noticeable to make a day-to-day -day difference between the new M5 hardware versus the M4. But what I like to do is let's go ahead and do a Geekbench score. And here you can see the specs right here. We do have more RAM memory, about 12 gigabyte RAM on the base model iPad Pro now versus previously it was about eight gigs of RAM. It's not listing the ARMS M5 processor right now, but it is an M5. But I find it weird how it says it's on iOS 18 when it's not. They're both on the same iOS 26. So that's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and run the Geekbench score and run. And here are the numbers for those results. I did ran Geekbench score about three times already. So the iPad is getting kind of warm. I am planning on doing thermal imaging. Let's see which iPad gets hotter the most. But as of right now, these are where the average after running at three times, not bad. It's slightly improved on the M5. Now let's get it out of here. Let's go ahead and test that Neuro AI processor from the previous M4 to the M5 now. So we're gonna select our neural engine and let's go ahead and run this AI Geekbench score now. Now, real quick guys, if you've been enjoying this video so far, you kindly take two seconds and hit that like button like. Those truly do help out the channel because those allow the channel to be powered by you guys, the viewers, which is why you don't see brands integrating sponsorship segments in my videos, taking like a minute or two off your time for like a VPN or better health or something like that. I personally prefer not having to work with those brands and thanks to you guys, we don't have to rely on them. So 
personally, I like to thank you for just taking the time and hitting the like button. Like, really does mean a lot. Let's carry on. And here are those results. Definitely higher number on a single precision score, as well as half precision score, but not so much on this final one. But now let's flip over the iPads. And let's see what kind of temperatures we're reaching right here. So the M4 is about the M4 is about 88 degrees Fahrenheit, and the M5 is cruising at 86 Fahrenheit. So it is slightly cooler, even to the touch. I could feel it, but even on the camera, you should be able to tell the signature differences between this one's the M4 and this is the M5. So it does have better heat management on the M5, which is quite neat. And then before I started this Geekbank score, I did took Apple's latest dynamic charger, which can go up to like 60 watts, from 40 to 60 watts trickle charging. Because one of the new features on the M5 is faster charging on the iPad Pro. And based off everything I've seen from a 0% charge back to 50, the iPad M5 took about 30 minutes to charge to 50%. Meanwhile, the M4 iPad took about 47 minutes. So there is a noticeable battery charge rate increase. And then if you have older iPad accessories, like the Magic Keyboard as an example, it's fully compatible even on the new M5. There's no compatibility issues whatsoever. It works just as well. This also includes the latest generation Apple Pencil Pro. I can simply line it up and immediately pairs. No, no compatible issues there whatsoever. So bottom line, this is what I think about everything I've seen. Yeah, there is better thermo, a better fast charging rate, but if you do everything efficiently, that's not really much of a selling point in my opinion. Overall performance wise, there's a noticeable imp performance increase from the M4, but nothing significant to the point where it's like, it's extremely noticeable. The numbers were pretty close, I gotta admit. And all the cool features that the M4 has are still found on the M5. It was definitely a minor upgrade. As center stage and everything else are still fully compatible on even the M5. 99 of us will not be able to tell the difference between even the M2, especially the M4. As we witnessed in the Geekbench scores, they're not really too far apart from each other. So if you're planning on upgrading from the M4 to the M5, it may not be totally worth it. Processing power and stuff like that, again, I'm pretty sure 99% of us don't even really use an iPad to its full potential. These things are overly powerful. Even the previous generation M4 is pretty powerful. But there you guys have it. That's my thoughts. That's my opinions. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about these uh, latest generation iPads? Are you sticking with your older model, M2, M4? Let me know in the comments down below. After seeing these Geekbench scores, you can download it on your device and go ahead and compare it with today's video. This way you can visually see if your iPad is slow or not on the later firmware update of iPad OS 26. Anyways, there you guys have it. If you like to watch more, maybe you'd like to see an in-depth tour of all the cool things you could do on an Apple TV, thanks to tvOS 26, we got a lot of hidden features and some cool abilities that we haven't received in the past. And I cover all that in this video over there where I show you my favorite tips and tricks and as well as hidden features that the Apple TV can now do. Thank you so much for watching.